Hi guys and welcome back to another video now today what I'm going to be bringing you is season 6 episode 8 of City Signings now if you do go on to enjoy today's video a like as always will be massively appreciated if you could try and hit 70 likes on today's video that would be absolutely class subscribe if you are new as well we are now on the road to 6,000 subscribers so make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on drop a comment in as well down in the comment section down below what are your thoughts on Bradford City signing a man Manuel Osadibe from Walsall on the initial two-year contract. Doesn't mention that there is an option of a further year, so just a two-year contract for an undisclosed fee. I think this is the second player we have paid a fee for. We obviously had to pay compensation for Jake Young. If I'm right in saying, I think this is the only other player that we've paid a transfer fee for. It certainly caused some interesting opinions, especially from Walsall fans. They definitely don't have the greatest opinion of him. But as always, I will wait to observe my judgment of him until he has played for Bradford City. But make sure you drop a like on today's video. Subscribe subscribe if you are new as well and let's get into it. So Bradford City tweeted at 8 o'clock this morning saying breaking news welcome to our latest signing Emmanuel Osabide who joins from Walsall the article does then read Osabide lands as latest summer signing. Bradford City AFC is pleased to welcome Emmanuel Osabide as the club's latest summer signing. The dynamic midfielder has put pen to paper on an initial two year deal from Walsall for an undisclosed fee. Osabide is operable both in the centre and on the flank and joins the Bantams with 91 appearances and 8 goals under his belt at the Saddlers over the past two seasons. Having spent time in the Tottenham Hotspur Academy, the 25-year-old began his professional career at Gillingham and also has served spells at Cambridge United, Newport County and Macclesfield Town. He said it feels great to finally have the deal over the line as it has been going on for quite a while now and I'm just delighted to be here. In the announcement video, they're obviously at the Utility Energy Stadium and on the pitch there is not one blade of grass in sight. Since then we've had updates on the pitch and there's quite clearly grass grass on the pitch now so this must have happened probably two weeks ago now so maybe there is some more signings which have already been confirmed maybe some contract extensions now there is kind of really only the main three players left to sign their new contracts obviously I think their official offers have expired now but we can offer them the same contract or we can maybe increase that for certain players I would definitely be looking to increase their wages and hopefully get them to re-sign but I don't think if either three of them that being Pordy, what and Vernon I don't think if either three of them don't sign I don't think it'd be the end of the world if we replace them rightly I think Vernon for me is the most important then what then Pordy but I did actually put a tweet out about the probability team or something very close to what the team will probably be going into next season asking Bradford City fans where they genuinely genuinely will at the time of recording with the team that we've got where they think Bradford City will finish a lot of people seem to be saying mid-table lower mid-table something like that now don't get me wrong it's only the 10th of June we've still got weeks and months left of the transfer window so we don't need to overreact we don't need to panic there is still lots of time left even before pre-season starts you don't have to get every signing in before pre-season we've made eight signings and this time last season I don't think we've made one so we're definitely going in the right direction are these signings the right fit for the club time will tell. He then goes on to say as soon as I spoke with the gaffer and with Ryan Sparks I knew this project was something that I wanted to be a part of. We're all aligned in the same goals and this is a perfect place for me to take the next steps in my career. The manager we have has been at the top of the game and everyone at the club is driven in the same direction to achieve our goal of promotion which we are more than capable of. Playing it in the past it has always been loud with the supporters imposing themselves on the game that is something I wanted to be a part of. Entertainment is a big part of my game and I want to get on the ball and make things happen and I'm ready to kick on and do what I need to do. Bantam's boss Mark Hughes said Emmanuel is someone we have been tracking for some time so we are delighted to be able to welcome him to the club. He's another player at a great age who has a lot of different components in his game which certainly adds to our threat as a side. His versatility and dynamism in the centre of the park and out wide coupled with determination to entertain people and be part of something special here made him a key target for us. I'm sure you will join me in welcoming him to the club and like myself we are looking forward to seeing him show us what he can do at Valley Parade. Osadibe, sorry, will be, I keep saying Osadibe, it's Osadibe, will be sponsored by Strass Porsche for the 22-23 season. His signing is subject to the relevant EFL and FA clearances. Now, having watched a little compilation highlights of how he's played, I more see him as a winger rather than a central midfield, especially in the Mark Q system. We, the Elliot Watt number six sort of role plays just in front of the back four. I don't think that's his game whatsoever. Potentially as the box-to-box -box midfielder, but I think I think 
He's probably going to play Ryan East as that number six, so I can't see him playing Ryan East and Osadibe as the two holding midfielders if you're then going to have Walker in the number 10. I think more than likely he will play as a winger, and we're going to compare his statistics last season to Charles Vernon because, obviously, Charles Vernon was probably our main goal threat throughout the season. When he did play, he was fantastic. Did have his injury problems, though, which is something Osadibe didn't have last season. But, obviously, Walsall, they put out a tweet as well saying, we can confirm that midfielder. Emmanuel Osadibe has joined official value Phantoms for an undisclosed fee. Emmanuel Osadibe joins Bradford City. Walsall Football Club can today confirm that midfielder Emmanuel Osadibe has joined fellow Skybet League 2 side Bradford City for an undisclosed fee. Osadibe joined the Saddlers in 2020 and made 91 appearances in all competitions. That's very impressive in just two years at the club. That's pretty much every league game in both campaigns. Obviously, I know a lot of them will, well, not a lot of them, but some of them will be in cup games. Uh, but he did also score eight goals. We would like to thank Emmanuel for his hard work and contributions during his spell with the club and we wish him all the best in the future. If we have a look at Walsall fans' opinions of him, obviously Bradford City fans were straight over there asking about, you know, what are their opinions on him. Someone here says, scored two goals in a pre-season friendly at non-league team, kidding you into thinking he's a good player. He will then put in a decent performance every seven or eight games before disappointing into obscurity again. Dot, 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 dot. Good luck. A lot of frustration can never work him out as he shows signs of talent but then overrides this with shocking performances. Very strange player but far too inconsistent assistant could come good for you it was never going to work with him and Michael Flynn uh, someone here says needs a manager who can get him going every game could be the best bloke on the pitch one week then look the laziest and most frustrating the next can play in a few positions too guarantee he will score against us next year as he had a few pops at our fans and vice versa I'm also pretty sure a lot of that people on social media have said that he likes to block people if you criticise him. So, fingers crossed he's not watching the SHD channel because that's something I do quite a lot. But hopefully it doesn't happen. If we go through a couple more, someone here says, has some talent, just inconsistent, best of luck to him. His concentration levels are poor and very inconsistent. He has the ability, uh, he has the ability sorry, but we only saw it about one in every 10 games. On his day, he is very good. There is a player in there, but he's very inconsistent. Mixed views from fans with effort and his attitude. We've been crap for years, so we need a clear out and a reset. And the final one we'll have a look at here is he basically scrolls through Twitter. So if you criticise him by name, you'll find yourself blocked. He'll have one or two ga good games out of 10. So that's pretty much the running theme where there's clearly a player in there. But for whatever reason, it's not quite worked out at Walsall. Obviously, Walsall have been horrendous for the past couple of years as well. So maybe it's best for both parties that he does move on. That is obviously something that has now happened. And as always, I will have to trust Mark Hughes, Stephen, Jen, all these people that are involved in the recruitment going into next season. I still do think we need another... Probably five or six signings with two or three leaving the club, maybe two or three more going out on loan potentially because the depth of quality in the squad isn't great right now. I don't think if we get two or three injuries to you know some of our more important players like Jamie Walker, Aboisa, Leangle, them sort of players, if they get injured, we really are going to struggle. I think we need, for me personally, a starting right back one, maybe two more centre-backs. I'd probably say just one more centre-back, but that's going to be really good. We have obviously, obviously been linked with the Hartlepool centre-back, Timmy Odissinu, something like that. I can't quite remember the name off the top of my head. We've also been linked with Richie Smallwood as well from Hull City. I think he's a midfielder, can also play centre-half. I do definitely think we need another central midfielder. I think we need another winger or two. Dion Pereira has been heavily linked to be coming back with Bradford City. I don't think we need any more strikers unless Andy Cook leaves the club. Do I think we've got enough power, uh, firepower up front now with Andy Cook, Jake Young, Kean Harrett and Lee Angle. Obviously Jake Young can play in a, a number of positions but I still think we need another goal scorer. But with only playing one up front, I don't think you can have five strikers. So, very interesting. It's definitely something for the club to consider. But if we compare the statistics from the season just gone by between Osadibe and Charles Burnham. Osadibe played 43 matches, starting 35 of them last season. Averaged 73 minutes per game and had one conclusion in the team of the week. He scored three goals last season, averaging a goal every 1,044 minutes with 0.1 goals scored per game. He did have 1.2 shots per game, but only 0.2 shots on target per game. His passing stats are actually very impressive. He averaged, uh, not average, he did get seven assists last season, which I think in a really poor Walsall side is very impressive. Average 46.7 touches per game with 
7 big chances created and 1.3 key passes per game. If we compare that to Charles Vernon, in terms of his matches played, he played 28 in total, starting 19 of them, averaging 67 minutes per game, getting 3 team of the week appearances. So, when he does play, Vernon's clearly the better player, but Vernon definitely did have his injury problems last season. You could probably say that was down to Derek Adams though. In terms of his attacking stats, Vernon scored 8 goals last season, averaging a goal every 233 minutes. So, he has about a 5 times better goal scoring record in terms of that. Average not point three goals per game but he did also average 2.5 shots per game so more shots but he did also average 0.9 shots on target per game so he's he takes more shots but he's more accurate with his shots if that makes sense only four assists only 33 touches per 90 only four big chances created and only 1.1 key passes per game as well so also db definitely better in the passing point of view Vernon definitely better in terms of an attacking goal scoring point of view as well obviously time will tell as always football isn't based on statistics I actually did see some Walsall fans say that his first touch would go further than some of his passes sometimes so we'll have to wait and see as always I will observe judgment wait until he's you know put on a Bradford City shirt and seeing what he can do like I said though we don't want to overreact either way we're not going to win the league with this squad but we're also not going to get relegated with this squad it's only the 10th of June there's plenty of time left in the transfer window it either opened today or yesterday it's not been open for long whatsoever there's plenty of time left and I'm sure it's all under control but thank you very much for watching today's video bit of a longer episode of City Sign so hopefully you have enjoyed if you have make sure you drop a like on it 70 likes as i said at the start of today's video would be absolutely class subscribe if you are new as well we are now on the road to 6,000 subscribers so make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on get your thoughts on the signing as well down in the comment section down below have a great rest of your day thank you for watching and i shall see you all very soon for another video peace